Hello, it is Admiral Sarah here for Admiral Sarah Chronicles. And this week I am talking about Star Trek Voyager. This is episode five, season five, episode 11. This episode's called Latent Image. Um, and I love this episode because while we're dealing with the doctor who is a hologram, but we're dealing with like, manipulated deep like program uh manipulation and this is kind of this is to me important and appropriate for this Scorpio full moon because Scorpio being a water sign deals with emotion and in this episode of course spoiler alerts we're talking about the captain manipulating the doctor's memories of an incident that caused him emotional distress and I feel like this is us right we experience some an event an incident usually as a child sometimes as an adult but then it it gets itself into our subconscious and we forget right? We're not consciously aware of the experience, yet we ex we pick up on breadcrumbs, as the doctor did. In this episode, we pick up on breadcrumbs that something happened, something caused us memory loss. We don't remember an incident, right? And then we notice little breadcrumbs that, hey, I, 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 something's being triggered in my memory, but I can't find it. I can't access it. And in this case, Captain Janeway deliberately goes in and erases memories in the doctor's matrix and the doctor's program so that he can't remember what happened um, because he had to make a decision that he didn't want to make as a doctor. And so this is kind of deep because, right, like we often think about when we notice the breadcrumbs of something and we start accessing those memories and the and the flood of them returning can cause a mental breakdown right and so in this world of conditioning programming it's almost like if we were plugged into a matrix uh, you know, a hollow matrix or a matrix and encouraged to forget a deeply emotional situation such as the doctor was like the program, the memories were eliminated from his program. They were deleted from his program. And then we suddenly notice these breadcrumbs and it triggers these old traumas or these old wounds, and then we have the breakdown again because we're remembering them. That's how deep like star science nonfiction can go is that while this is like an you know 60 minute episode, at the end, we don't really notice that he has completely recovered from it, right? Just as in the case as, as we as humans don't necessarily recover from whatever our experience was but we do remember sometimes we remember what happened and the emotions return right so I love this because if we think about it like we're programmed we're conditioned not to not experience emotion right? Emotions get in the way of daily life. They get in the way of being able to go to work. They get in the way of taking care of our day-to-day -day family needs or household needs. So we're kind of encouraged to not be emotional, but as humans, we're completely emotional and we do need to experience our emotions and we do need to feel them and we do need to acknowledge them and whatnot, whether it's low vibe emotions like anger or shame or guilt, we need to feel through that. And so in this case, they were able to put the doctor in a hollow, uh, one of the hollow ducks and have him experience whatever he needed to experience for days on end. 
And that's not always the case with us. We don't always get the opportunity to put ourselves in an isolated space to go through the emotions. However, if we were, it would actually be of our benefit to be able to give ourselves the time and the space to process the emotions. And I think this is something that like is so deep, is so good, is so gold because, you know, when we realize that we've been harboring something subconsciously, we, if we could give ourselves the opportunity to feel the the emotions that we're harboring in our subconscious and feel through them and experience them and and cleanse them and and allow them, right? Like what benefit would it be to us as humans to be able to give ourselves the time, space, grace, compassion to feel through old emotions, old feelings? And this is to me something very important. Um, I'm someone who experiences emotions through my body. I think we all do to an extent, but I do think emotions affect different people different ways. However, again, I think we all experience them in our body in a different way. Um, some of us through pain, some of us through digestive discomfort, et cetera. There's any number of ways. There's a book called The Body Keeps the Score, and it's a difficult read because it's a lot of trauma stories and whatnot, but it really illustrates how emotions store in our body systems. And I've heard story over story over the years of doing this work, whether it's been in coaching or astrology, um, emotional intelligence, all of the things, story after story of people who, you know, couldn't like one story I remember was a woman who was having difficulty conceiving and she did some intense like therapy around her you know wounding around her dad and as she moved through this you know feelings about her dad she was then able to conceive now she's got three kids um and I'm not saying it's an end all be all. I'm not saying there's a solution. I'm not saying there's a resolution. What I am saying is that we all store emotions in our body, in our physical body that can cause disruption or discomfort. And if we actually had the opportunity or took the opportunity, sometimes we get to do it intentionally to move through the emotion then we may clear it from whatever energetic space it's holding in our bodies. So I really love this episode for that because we are coming out of a time and space where we've really been discouraged from being emotional, showing our emotions. And, you know, therefore, like you, you don't get to feel that because you need to be a responsible adult. You don't get to feel, you know, don't be mad, don't be sad, don't experience those emotions because we need you to come to work and we need you to do this job or, you know, you've got to put them aside and be a parent or you've got to put the, the emotions aside and, and do this responsibility or that responsibility. And that's just not the way humans are meant to operate, right? We're meant to feel emotion and the more we store them, you know, in our body and, and don't allow ourselves the grace and the space to feel them that can cause a malfunction right in this case of course like i said this was a, a you know the doctor is a hologram he's a computer program but think about it what if we're computer programs what if we're programs if we are and we have software or we have hardware or we have data then how much of that data is being uh damaged or corrupted because of something that we're harboring deep in our subconscious. And I love that seven of nine is the one to remind Janeway about the realness of individuality in that as an individual separate from the collective, right? How completely literal 
<clears throat> right? Because as we separate ourselves from the collective be, uh, hive mind, we realize that, you know, we're not the same as everyone else, right? That's why, we, you know, that's where the individuality comes in. And we are coming to this point with Pluto and Aquarius the individual does matter. The individual's gifts, the individual's experiences do matter. While we are all relatable to some extent, our individual experience matters, right? Like I come into this small town where, you know, most people here are, have, you know, they're in the the lineage game of, you know, their family has owned the farm or owned the land for years or the family money has been a part of this community for years and here I come in like you know an astrologer and a nomad and legally blind and all of these things and people look at me like what what they, they don't even have a comprehension that's how deep the the same same life thing is the same here like they've all done the same thing some of you know more recently the kids of graduated high school and gone to college and gone on to do bigger and better things, but a lot of them don't come back to this community. So this community is not used to someone who's different, right? Think about like, um, oh gosh, like any kind of movie or show that you've seen where there's like that one person in town who, you know, they're like, oh, that's the weird one. That's the, that's the, you know, sh that's the witch. That's the, the creepy lady or the, you know, something like that. Like you can probably think of any example in like almost any show, right. Or any movie where there is some individual in a, in a seemingly, um, I almost want to say like fairy tale or like fantasy community. Like if you think about Edward Scissorhands, right. Like, and then the, there was always the creepy lady. Um, or if you think about, uh, I don't know. But there was always one person, right, that, that's different from the rest. And that's probably the person who's accessed their individuality and, you know, does the things like, like feeling their emotions or, you know, tapped into some sort of spiritual energy. And I'm not judging or, or like, there's no distinguishing spirituality here. It's just a matter of like, when we've accessed those parts of our individuality, we look like the weirdo. And I think that's a good thing, right? That's my Aquarius heart coming through. But anyway, I say all of that to say like every community has one, every friend group has one that's different. That's, that's the individual. And, but to be that individual, you have to do things that are different from the collective. And that may mean, that may mean you look, you get, almost like ostracized from groups of people because of your individuality. And I think there's a fine line between distancing yourself from a group or community to be the individual and somehow finding a way to immerse yourself into a group or community while maintaining your individuality. And I feel like this is kind of where I'm at right now, personally, is in this space. But to get here, I've had to go through what I've gone through, right? I've had to be the nomad and have like my own like dark night of the soul spiritual journey of processing all of my emotions. No way could I have moved back to this community five or 10 years ago and been as you know, able to be present here as I am now. And I wouldn't say it's been a hundred percent effortless because it has not, but I think if I had come back here like five or 10 years ago, I wouldn't have been, uh, as able to um, be present here and be a part of it as I am now. And so, but it all comes back to how I, how we choose individually to process our emotions, to process our subconscious stuff that we're harboring, right? 
you know, as we evolve and, you know, we, we notice the breadcrumbs of something and then we go back in and, and discover or rediscover something that did affect us emotionally and then process those emotions, be with those emotions. Like it allows us space because we clear that and it allows us the space to then come into a group or community in a whole different way with a different perspective, right? So there's an evolutionary journey here. So anyway, I could probably go on and on about this one because I this is this was a really good one. And I think with the Scorpio moon, you know, Scorpio does deal with, you know, we talk about transformation or transcendence with Scorpio. And really what that is 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 metamorphosizing, is that a word? metamorphosis, metamorphosizing a deep wound, subconscious wound into, you know, making that our mission or making that like the thing that we're able to talk about, right? This is why I say like learning that I had a Scorpio moon and understanding what a Scorpio moon meant in my natal chart was so important. It was so vital because even after years of emotional intelligence work, I still couldn't manage my emotions and I still have my moments and I've learned to accept that there are times when I'm extra emotional. I'm extra emotional. Something is trigger, triggering me to be more emotional than other times, right? It's kind of why I appreciate an earth moon, a Capricorn, a Taurus, or a Virgo moon, um, or even a fire moon in Aries, Leo, or Sagittarius, because I don't have a lot of that, a lot of those elements in my natal chart. So when I have that kind of, when that kind of energy is happening with the transiting planets, it's supportive of me to actually do stuff and get stuff done. But that means on the flip side that when the moon is in Scorpio, Pisces, or Cancer, then I have to be with the emotions that surface when the moon is in a water sign or any other planet. Like this, this is, I'm saying moon, but like it could be any other planet, right? So um, this is why following the energy patterns for me is important. Um, so maybe this resonates for you. I hope it does. Uh, I would love to know in the comments if this resonates for you. If you, you know, notice these patterns within yourself, um, it's something that I have been practicing working with, still practicing working with, will probably continue practicing working with for the rest of my life um, because it's it's how I'm able to flow with the energy. It's like, oh, I can look forward to, uh, you know, I mean, yes, be in the moment, be present in, you know, this Mercury retrograde, this month of April, that's been so heavy energetically between the eclipse and the Pisces placements, Neptune, Saturn, and Mars and Pisces, but, and Mercury retrograde on top of all of that. Um, but it's, it's, you know, there's been times before when, uh, you know, the end of 2022 into 2023, when Mars was retrograde in Gemini, I don't have any Gemini placements, but it, it was on, you know, any, we have all, we have all the 12 signs in our chart, in our natal chart. So things do affect us. And I remember when Mars was retrograde, I had zero energy. I had zero, like my brain was just mush. It was foggy. And it was like, okay, let me just be with this. And then Mars went direct and, you know, a couple other things happened. And I was like, oh, okay. And, you know, so here we are in April, 2024. We've been through a lot with the, like I said, the eclipse, um, the, the um, Pisces placements and with Mercury retrograde. But however, coming into May, like, okay, now we are going to be able to breathe a little bit, but we're going to have to be disciplined to take advantage of it. Right. So it's kind of like learning how to move with the energy as it shows up. Right. Knowing that when that, you know, if we take advantage of a time when we feel foggy or we feel extra emotional, taking advantage of that time and space and being with the brain fog, being with the emotions that are surfacing, then on the other side, when, you know, Venus moves into Taurus and Mars moves into Aries, it'll be like oh, deep breath. And then using that energetic discipline to 
you know, move things forward. So anyway, hopefully that made some sense. Again, this was Star Trek Voyager season five, episode 11, latent image. Um, I do watch these on Paramount plus. Uh, so if you've got access to that, although I'm sure you could find them elsewhere too, it's just what I happen to use. Anyway, if you've got a science fiction, uh, something that you would love to see me discuss on Admiral Sarah Chronicles, drop me a comment below and let me know what your um, science fiction thing is that I can turn into science nonfiction and relate it to a human experience. So thanks for tuning in to Admiral Sarah Chronicles and I'll talk to you on the next one.